Uh, today we're going to check out Scott's F40 Ford and get him to take us for a short ride and oogle it and do a photo shoot. This is a beautiful, beautiful car. The O was already taken, so. Oh, you got to be kidding. Can you open a hood and let's see what, sure. what that Rojet looks like, baby. Woo, that is nice. Johnny Cafaro, this one's for you, because we know you like these expensive cars. Beautiful. Beautiful. He's a beautiful car. I was really impressed right, right off the bat with the quality of the paint, the quality of the fits and finish. What a beautiful car. I have to get them both at once. Oh, okay. Oh, look at that. Boy, that is clean. That's as clean as my motorcycle. <laughs> well, if not cleaner. How many miles you got on this now? 5,000. It's oh. never, never been wet. It's never even been washed. That guy you saw in the video, Buddy Weed is Cobra, has never been washed. Nine years. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty neat. Whoa. Yeah, I've never run the windshield wipers on. It's never been in the rain. Never been in the rain. I like that. And it's all original? Yeah. I mean, it isn't like you've gone out to track days a few times and put it to the test. Oh, that is some piece of work. <whistles> yeah, I'm sure my friends that like cars are going to be jealous of me. <laughs> Look at the interior on this thing. Wow. That is unreal. And that's the Viper truck over there, the one that's in the poster? Yep. Viper Dooley. This is this is a lot cooler than Viper Dooley, though. Boy, that's nice. Now, what's the history? They made these for a few years. They made They're only made so many of them, or? Well, Ferrari. Ford was going to buy Ferrari in the '60s. Okay. And uh, and they got excited about road racing and all that stuff. And, yep. Uh, and Ferrari changed their mind in typical American fashion. Ford said, "Well, the heck with those guys. We're going to build our own." Yeah, yeah, like so, Carroll Shelby thing. Yeah, they built the Ford GT the GT40, and they went out and took first, second, and third in all the races against Ferrari. Oh, so that, might have, that must have made them popular. <laughs> and then in uh, 2005, they built these, and in 2006, so they made a little over, they made like 4,030 of them. Okay. And uh, this particular model here is a 2006, and it's the commemorative edition in this tungsten gray, and they, uh, my estimate is they made about 400 of these. Oh, now what is the extra pedal for there? It's just to put your foot against. Oh, okay. During hard braking and in other words, you have a brake, a clutch, and an extra. The other one's just a solid piece. Right. Okay. Oh, that is nice. You know I like gray. You know I'm a gray guy too. I was so adamant about getting this color that uh, I considered not getting one. So I couldn't get this color. But I, did, I did have a black one with silver stripes picked out in Lubbock, Texas. Now we did have, at one of our cruise nights, we had one that was red with a white stripe and Florida plates. I don't know if you know the guy or, like you guys all know each other or... No, no. Like the Ferrari guys and the Lambo guys all seem to know each other. Those wheels, wow. Talk about metal finishing. We always talk about metal finishing. Those wheels are. Yeah. Nice, yeah, huh? Those are painted. Yeah, but look at the quality of it. They're, they're painted. Not done like, with a brush, you know. <laughs> probably with similar paint formula as what you're using. Well, you know? It's a very nice finish on them. I'm sure they know that the finish of the, the metal is a selling feature, you know. Yeah, they're beautiful. I love these scoops. I'd love to incorporate those scoops into one of my model planes. Or onto the... the Somewhere in a fairing of the R1 have that scoop or this scoop. Very nice. So if you look at this, you see the kink in the door right here? Yeah. Well, the designer, when they first designed it, you know... The, it's like a Testarossa almost. This, this groove was deeper, and they weren't going to have windows that opened. Mm. And uh, then they decided that if they just moved this out and bent that, then these they could have windows would work. Okay, but obviously it's air-conditioned too, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's got... Air conditioning, electric windows, and a big stereo, and everything else is, there's no other amenities. No power steering, no power brakes. 
Well, it's, it's got that, but I mean, it's, there's no electric, um, you know, there's no cruise control. Oh, it's yeah. not, it's not made for that. No navigation. No GPS. If you don't know where you are, don't take the car out. Very, very nice. And what does this weigh? Do you know the weight of it? No, I don't. It's obviously in a class with the Ferraris and stuff, and, and uh, Z06s and that. Yeah. Oh, look at those brakes. Woo! You don't even have any wear on those rotors. They're like brand new. Do you enter it in shows and bring it to like cruise nights? Do they have cruise nights down here? Yeah, they do. I've, I've taken it to maybe three or four of them. Boy, the one up by us stole the show when he pulled in with that. He had a lot of people running over to look. He opened the hood and everything. It, this is a neat car because it's, uh, it's, it's drop dead 100% American. And yeah, American right, stuff. right. No Italian stuff. Yeah, if you pulled in with something from Europe and, and this, the people gather around this, and I didn't anticipate that, but it sure is a nice. Uh, yeah. It's yeah. a nice. It's a nice little piece of icing on the cake, you know. Yeah, yeah, it absolutely is. Because I enjoy the people enjoying it. Boy, the styling of it is. I've never. I didn't even look at the one up by us because there was such a crowd around. I couldn't shoot video. You know, I got to see it and talk to the guy for a minute, and then it was like, oh, the guy was looking to go get have a few drinks with his girlfriend or something. So. You know, there's there's very few boats and very few cars that look good from every angle. And yeah. I'll, in my opinion, this is one of those cars. Yeah, I guess you're noticing. I'm trying to shoot every angle, so if I want to steal a few f solid frames. Now, if you could put it out in the sun where there's nothing in the background ugly, I'll get some stills. I asked my friend John Pothia to uh, Photoshop up something nice for us. The last time he did, you know what he did for us? He took us at a Super Bowl party and put us at the Super Bowl wearing our giant shirts and hats so he's a pretty creative guy maybe he'll do that for us John start thinking of a background for this this should be cool I'm looking at that in the back or is that the fuel tank right behind the license plate I guess it is it's in the front about as much fun as it gets. Being in Florida, Daytona Bike Week, hanging out with Scott and the boys, ex-NASCAR driver, Art Thomas, world famous number 35. I guess you gotta nudge it. Look at the paint on this in the sun. Check, that is B25 silver if there ever was one. Wow, look at that. Is that ever cool? try to shoot some still pictures here too while we got the opportunity that's nice right there it's perfect we're gonna shoot some stills and uh... oh look at this look at this start engine and start engine mode what a view you get from the from the driver's seat here it's, it's surprisingly uh, easy to see out of because you look through the window that's Oh, the yeah, engine. yeah. Wait, I got to do this. I got to go backward and show how the... I can't see it. You can see the engine back there. That is wild. So here we are, we're just, we're north of Daytona now? South, 20 miles. 20 miles south of Daytona in the GT40. Life is good. The only problem with my whole life is I got older this morning when I woke up. It's something I'm trying to correct, but <laughs> Scott's gonna take me to the fountain of youth. sound in a cockpit, huh? Sounds like a business jet, doesn't it? It sounds like a business jet, yeah. It's got a lot to it. Yeah. Yeah, it accelerates like an R1, where you, the wheel spin is the limiting factor. Oh my god. Know 
wall of cops anyways. <laughs> Don't hit a Harley, oh my God, can you imagine? Yeah, the, the limiting factor on a R1 is the wheel coming up, or wheel spin, one or the other. Other than that, it'll, if you can lay over the tank far, and oh, look at this, we're gonna hit a turkey vulture. Oh my God, look at this, we almost whack a turkey vulture. Jesus, <laughs> ah, horrible. Wow, that's nice. My friend with the Z06, he gets to look at all the videos too. He'll he'll love this car, boy. What a piece of work this thing is. Whoa. And it feels like it's got good. It's not peaky at all. No, it's. I mean, it's got it's got some guts down low too. You don't have to wind it to six grand or so. It's strong all the way up the all the way up the power band. So just a, a minute break here to truth and advertising. I've never been in a nicer car. This is absolutely a piece of jewelry. And it's not only the fact that it's a great sports car. It's a great, it smells nice inside. The whir of that, the engine right behind you, it's holy mackerel, what a sound. And all these switches and gauges and dials and, oh boy, this was really something. Thank, Scott, thank you so much for entertaining us here. And uh, needless to say, I don't have the, uh, the ability to, to do this very often, but whenever I do get a chance, I try to take, take advantage of it. I mean, this was like uh, when I owned the air coupe, somebody asking me to take a ride in a Learjet. It was just a whole different level of fun. And I know John Pothy has got his 62 restored vet and Kent has the Camaro with the big engine and everything, but this was really something really special. Oh, this is sweet. Oh, that is R1 power. This could make you want to sell your motorcycle. <laughs> and these are these are geared for over 200, right? is when this is supposed to go. 205? I don't know what a Z06 goes, but I know it goes somewhere close to that. Boy, that scenery goes by in a hurry, boy. You look at how quick that road's going by. And this was just fun. I had never been around this part of Florida, even though I'm from Florida. And this, this was really a unique day, a unique experience. And again, Scott, thank you. I don't get to do this that often. This was, this was absolutely a, a once in a lifetime opportunity for me. And I love it. You know what I never realized too is that it really is like people, people that have never ridden a really fast motorcycle. The first couple times, oh. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> The first couple times you really get it going fast, you go, whoa. It like when you think about it, you think it's gonna be the same at hundred as hundred and fifty. And it isn't. No. It, it it just changes everything. This is the drive I love. Oh, this is unreal. Well the thing I love about this car, you know, I built a lot of muscle cars and a lot of old Corvettes and the older cars, the older muscle cars, when you get on them, the front end would come up, even the Corvettes, they'd come up mm. and they'd stay up until you let off the gas. So if you're running 150 miles an hour or 120 right. miles an hour in one of those cars, the front ends up and the road gets real narrow. Oh yeah. Because they start, yeah. they start to just want to kite. And that's the thing I noticed about this car is if you're going fast, you always want to have the windows all the way closed. Mm. And you can drive it with one hand at whatever speed you're going. And it's, it makes- It's a rock. It, yeah, it's a guy, a guy like me that doesn't have a lot of you know, sports car driving experience. Yeah. It'll make you think you're a better driver than you are. Yeah, I bet you can get in trouble too. Yeah, they wreck about one of these a month. Ooh. Because they're just so brutally fast and uh, and they, they fool you into thinking that, that you're better than you are. No, I'll bet. Oh, they got the bikes all loaded up for the ride back to Ray's. That was good timing. You want to take a picture with them? In the yeah, I want to get, yeah, let them all stand behind a car. Let me find, let's go somewhere where the sun's going to work right for us. This relatively flat back here. Get a couple pictures for the internet too. This, having a backyard like this is is quite a luxury. <laughs> you won't you won't have no any trouble in the sun finding the sun here. Oh man! What a hoot! 
What a once in a lifetime hoot. Yeah, at the Super Bowl 50 yard line. Well, that added a nice little uh, extra cherry to the Sunday of this trip. And the guys are loading up the cars. We're going to shoot a few more pictures and we're going to be headed back to Tampa. If we go to Bonneville, forget. I, I would say as long as, as long as he's around, we just keep coming. Yeah. And we're getting all suited up and trail it up for the ride back. And it looks like it's going to be a beautiful day. It rained on the way here, but it'll be looking real good for the ride home. And shaped it. And, and carved it, really, yeah. yeah. But see, that's the stuff, that's the kind of stuff you do with your airplanes. It's exactly the same, yeah. And uh, so I knew you'd appreciate it. Yeah. Well, now I got an excuse. Next time we come down, we're going to go drag racing with the, uh, <laughs> the Viper car. How many horsepower does that have? That's 500. That's only 500? For hardly worth even taking a test ride. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that only goes 150 miles an hour. Oh, jeez. I'm, I'm shot. Well, we'll have something for next time, and you'll have the R1 next time you come up by me. <laughs> it, it couldn't be any better. As we're getting ready to leave, Got an errant first. outlaw biker shows up. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I see he's, he's got my paint on there. Look at that. Look at that paint. Nice. That's a nice restoration. What's the story with this? Give well, me a quick an, story. It's a, it's a bike that's been standing in a garage for like 12 years. It's all rusted up and and uh, worn out. And um, it was a, uh, it's a KZ 1000, the 1980 fuel injection limited ed edition. At the, the 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 step seat and the back and everything else. So I just um, the, all the engine cases were all uh, corroded up and what have you. So clean them up and spray that um, what the hammer right finish that off and then clean it up and made the tail, tail end the CB400 tail end mm -hmm. made, a, made a mold out of that and then um, re, re, remake a new seat that will fit the K, KZ nice 1, 000, so. yeah that's nice sprayed the wheel actually it looks nicer than my Suzuki seat but I don't want to tell you that yeah, <laughs> yeah it was fuel injected but it came with carburetors yeah wow and I took the wheels and I sprayed them just a matte finish and stuff, you know. I got a touch up, a couple of touch ups and stuff. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. What did you spray the cases with? Uh, hammerite. I don't know what that is. It's like a paint that doesn't um, doesn't go smooth. It, what it's is a hammer tone finish? Like hammer oh, a hammer tone finish. finish. Okay, yeah. like on a mammoth munch. Whatever that means. Oh, it's an old motorcycle. <laughs> it's the way they finish the mammoth munch. Yeah. I took the standard clusters off, you know, put one single thing on, and a, a speedo on it, and a smaller light on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lowered the front um, fender a little bit. It's a nice bike. It's different. Seat, I made my own custom seat, you know, designed, did my own molding of it, and... Chung Sings. What's that? The tires. I don't know what that yeah, is. Yeah, the, the, the Chinese Sing Hi-Max. I put them on the RD350. Okay. Chinese tires? It's yeah, it's amazing. How, I've been using them for years, how good they are and how cheap they are. Yeah. I mean, they're like 40 some dollars a piece or something. Wow. Paint is really nice. That's B25 silver, I guess. That I don't really know, is. That you know, paint I got for free. Used to be, I painted a boat with it and I got the leftover paint. And oh, okay, it, so. yeah. That's how he picked the color. <laughs> That's how I, picked. I was going to go silver. And I got I've to done things similar to that. Like, okay, let me know. Make Ray has the leftover carbon fiber on that uh, muffler. Uh, By the way, for anybody who doesn't know, this is the muffler I repaired for Ray right here. The warranty hasn't run out yet. There's a windy, wa windy muffler. Yeah, if you ever want a carbon muffler, you know, we could make a deal. Okay. Uh, I've known a lot of them. And what it is, it's a racing only, and it was made real thin to be light. And to be honest with you, I put 25,000 miles on it, so it okay. wasn't really meant for that. Hey, Art, is that uh, that's your SV? Yeah. Do you ever ride it? Yeah. Oh, he rides it a lot. You need to sell it, man. So this turned out to be a really, a really memorable day for me. I got to ride in an F-40 Ford, something I normally never would get to do. And I want to thank Ray and Art and Scott, everybody that made this possible. 
And the ride in this car really opened my mind up to something that I really wasn't aware of, is how when you get involved in a car like this, it can take over your life, just like the motorcycles have taken my, my life over, or like when I had the air coupe, it was my whole life. And in a, a car like this is a very special, special thing. Scott, thank you for sharing this with us because this is something I normally would never get to do. I go to car shows and I look at the cars and I talk to the guys and I Google them and, and wish I had the money for this kind of stuff. But the reality is I don't. And the, the bottom line is this was a very special treat. Now, sadly, since we shot this video, our good friend, Art Thomas, who is on the right here, uh, passed on and I love the fact that I have some of this video to keep his memory alive and Art, we miss you dearly. We all do. And from this trip I made to Ray's, it got me excited about having an RD and there's going to be another story to follow this at some point in time. I, I rode what was my original race bike back in 1973. He, Ray still had it. I took a ride around the area where Ray lives, half an hour, 45 minutes, and I knew I had to have one. And that, that winter, Ray brought that bike up to my house, and I spent the whole winter restoring it back to almost brand new condition with the help of Luciano. So it's good memories within good memories within good memories, and that's what having good friends is all about. It, it just couldn't be any better than that. And one of the things, as time passes on, you realize you do lose some of your friends and the ones you still have, you have to treasure them and treasure them dearly. And final, before I end the video, I want to again, thank you, Scott. Thank you so much.